The first book that I've chosen is just a group of poems from Shel Silverstein called Where the Sidewalk Ends. Um, I picked a few that sounded appropriate for this quarantine. And the first one was introduced to me by my favorite teacher, um, Estes Wilcher. Sarah Cynthia Sylvia Stout would not take the garbage out. Sarah Cynthia Sylvia Stout would not take the garbage out. She'd scour the pots and scrape the pans, candy the yams and spice the hams. And though her daddy would scream and shout, she simply would not take the garbage out. And so it piled up to the ceilings, coffee grounds, potato peelings, brown bananas, rotten peas, chunks of sour cottage cheese, it filled the can, it covered the floor, it cracked the window and blocked the door. With bacon rinds and chicken bones, drippy ends of ice cream cones, prune pits, peach pits, and orange peel, gloppy glumps of cold oatmeal, pizza crust with withered greens, soggy beans and tangerines, crusts of black burned buttered toast, grisly bits of beefy roasts, the garbage rolled on down the hall. It raised the roof. It broke the wall. Greasy napkins, cookie crumbs, globs of gooey bubble gum, cellophane from green bologna, rubbery blubbery macaroni, peanut butter caked and dry, cuddle, curdled milk and crusts of pie, moldy melons, dried up mustard, eggshells mixed with lemon custard, cold French fries and rancid meat, yellow lumps of cream of wheat. At last, the garbage reached so high that finally it touched the sky. And all the neighbors moved away and none of her friends would come to play. And finally, Sarah Cynthia Stout said, okay, I'll take the garbage out. But then of course it was too late. The garbage reached across the state from New York to the Golden Gate, and there in the garbage she did hate, poor Sarah met an awful fate that I cannot right now relate because the hour is much too late, but children remember Sarah Stout and always take the garbage out. I thought a lot of you probably have had spaghetti. <laughs> Seems appropriate. Spaghetti, spaghetti all over the place, up my elbows, up to my face, over the carpet and under the chairs, into the hammock and wound round the stairs, filling the bathtub and covering the desk, making the sofa a mad mushy mess. The party is ruined, I'm terribly worried. The guests have all left, unless they're all buried. I told them, bring presents, I said, throw confetti. I guess they heard wrong because they all threw spaghetti. And my last one, sick. I cannot go to school today, said Peggy Ann McKay. I have the measles and the mumps, a gash, a rash and purple bumps. My mouth is wet, my throat is dry. I'm going blind in my right eye. My tonsils are big as rocks. I've counted 16 chicken pox, and there's one more, that's 17. And don't you think my face looks green? My leg is cut, my eyes are blue. It might be instamatic flu. I cough and sneeze and gasp and choke. I'm sure that my left leg is broke. My hip hurts when I move my chin. My belly button's caving in. My back is wrenched, my ankle sprained. My appendix pains each time it rains. My nose is cold, my toes are numb. I have a sliver in my thumb. My neck is stiff, my voice is weak. I hardly whisper when I speak. My tongue is filling up my mouth. I think my hair is falling out. My elbows bent, my spine ain't straight. My temperature is 108. My brain is shrunk, I cannot hear. There is a hole inside my ear. I have a hangnail and my heart is, what? What's that? What's that you say? You say today is Saturday? Goodbye. I'm going out to play.